The next phase in the compiler generation process or the compiler design process is uh, designing a tool for syntax analysis purpose. So, we have seen so far the lexical analyzer, so that can return uh, the tokens that are appearing in the language, so valid, valid words of the language. Now, these words are to be connected or they, they need to be uh, sequenced in a proper fashion for some meaningful constructs of the language. So, whatever be the language starting with English to some programming language, so there is some uh, sequence in which these tokens has to appear. So, lexical analyzer, so it cannot determine that sequence, so it can just uh, give you the tokens that are coming or the uh, words that are coming in the, uh, in, in the input uh, source uh, file. And the next job is to uh, try to is to see whether these words are appearing in a proper sequence or not. So, if they are appearing in a proper sequence, then they are following the grammar rules of the language and accordingly uh, e, e, the entire program is accepted as a valid program, entire input file is accepted as a valid input for the uh, language that we are considering. So, this phase, so we will be discussing on this syntax analyzer design or so the task of syntax analysis and it is very complex in the sense that. Uh, depending upon uh, the programming language constructs uh, which are quite varied in nature. So, uh, it is uh, it is often very difficult to come up with uh, some syntax analysis tool and uh, depending upon uh, the constructs that we have sometimes we can have we can have a very simple type of syntax analyzer whereas, uh, 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 if the language is quite complex the grammar is quite complex in that case uh, the construction also becomes difficult. And many times we need to do a trade off like some, uh, so we have to uh, use the uh, knowledge or the intuition of the, of the um, uh, compiler designer to resolve between different issues that are appearing in the, uh, in the uh, reduction process. So, the our discussion will flow in this um, uh, way, first we will uh, discuss about role of parsers. So, parser is the technical term for this syntax analyzer. So, it parses the input file into uh, the uh, into the grammar of the language. So, if it is successful, if it is uh, successful in the sense that if the grammar, if the, uh, if the input file is grammatically correct, so it follows a, a certain pattern by which uh, this entire program can be derived starting with the start symbol of the grammar. So, that is the role of the parser. So, parser will try to give a proof that okay, this particular input file follows the grammar of the language and if it is successful in proving it, so it will give, it will return a parse tree which is constructed by in terms of the terminals and non-terminal symbols that are used for specifying the grammar and then uh, after that based on that parse tree, the compiler designer can uh, try to do so take some actions so that. Uh, we, it can generate code or it can uh, do some other transformation to the input pro input file so on. So, that is the basic role of parser. So, as uh, so I think now you can follow that ok it is uh, it has to check all the grammar constructs of the language. So, as a result it is going to be quite involved. Then there are different types of grammars. So, we will be discussing uh, mostly on the context free grammars because uh, most of the programming language constructs, so they belong to this category of uh, 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 this category of grammars. Okay. So, most of the programming language uh, they follow uh, their constructs can be specified by means of context free grammars. So, we will be mo mostly discussing on context free grammar. After, uh, after introducing these grammars and all, we will be looking into is uh, two class of parsing technique. The first class is known as top down parsing and the second class is known as bottom up parsing. So, it is like this that suppose I need to, suppose I need to uh, develop some, uh, uh, suppose I, I am given an input line say x greater than y then uh, say uh, if uh, so p equal to say q plus r something like this is given. And there are some rules in the language, where there, uh, there are some rules in the grammar that are used for specifying the uh, language. Now, one possibility is that you start with these basic symbols like p equality q plus r x greater than y etcetera. So, so you start with those symbols x greater than y, then p, then equality symbol q plus symbol r 
and all that so you start with that and then try to combine them in some fashion to uh, such that in a tree type of structure maybe you try to combine say these three together into some you know, symbol similarly maybe you try to combine so these three together into some symbol then you try to combine say these three into some symbol then finally you try to combine these two into some symbol where this final one is the start symbol of the grammar so this is the start symbol of the grammar so what is happening is that ultimately we are producing a tree and the way i have described it i have started with the at the lowest level the uh, the input file itself and from there i am trying to reduce that input file to the start symbol of the grammar so this type of approach so they are known as bottom up parsing because i am starting with the uh, symbols or the words of the language and then trying to combine them together towards the start symbol of the grammar just the reverse approach uh, that is uh, given a program we can start with the start symbol and then try to see like what may be the possible set of rules so that ultimately it boils down to this particular program so it is actually looking in this direction so previously we were going in this direction and now we are going in the opposite direction starting with the start symbol we are trying to go down and reach the final program so that particular approach will be known as top down approach so in general top down approach uh, they are simpler than bottom up approach however there are restrictions also like we will see that uh, 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 for certain languages so it may be difficult to construct top down parser because of the nature of the uh, grammar whereas uh, 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 it may be possible to construct the bottom up uh, parsers for them and in general so we will see that uh, the bottom up parsers often they make a superset of this top down parsers so for what for any language if you can construct a top down parser you can also construct a bottom up parser but the reverse is not true so this way uh, we will be looking into both top down and bottom up parsing strategies because bottom up parsing is costly okay? it is so constructing the parser is difficult so uh, it is costly and it takes more time for uh, constructing the parser so uh, many simple grammars so will be the, we can very easily construct the top down parsing technique and then we can have a parser for that so we will look into some examples from both the categories then we will be looking into some parser generators so as we go through the chapter then we will see that okay uh, the, uh, the, uh, there are algorithms and techniques so which are fine so they, they are all automated that is uh, so once you understand the theory so it is possible for us to write down the corresponding program which will act as the parser but due to the sheer volume of the uh, programming language uh, grammars that we have today so it, it is very difficult to construct those parsers by hand so we will be looking into some uh, tool which will be used for this uh, which will be acting as this parser generator just like for lexical analysis tool so we have lexical analysis job so we had the tool lex so here also for parser generator so we have got uh, tools called yak then so the yak is yet another compiler generator compiler uh, compiler yet another compiler compiler so what does it mean why compiler is coming twice is because that because of the fact that it is a compiler for a compiler so he has you specify a grammar and for that it will generate a compiler so it is based that's why it is a compiler compiler so it compiles a compiler or it makes a compiler so that's why it is like this yet another compiler compiler and the abbreviation is yak and just because the abbreviation is yak some other versions of the tool that has come up one one of them known, is known as bison okay and there are many others i believe so the bison does not have any full form so this is basically it, uh, taking yak as an animal so it is taking bison as another tool but whatever it is so basic principle remains same so uh, so they are all parser generators and they can be used for automatically generating parser from the specification so our job is to see that the specification is correct and we understand uh, how these parser generators work actually so once we do that so we'll be able to write our own parsers so throughout the chapter we'll uh, see this thing 
So, let us start with uh, the role of a parser. The role of a parser is like this. So, uh, the parser actually is sitting somewhere here. So, this is uh, um, talking to the lexicon analyzer tool for tokens. So, it whenever it uh, needs a token to for, uh, proceed, so it will ask the lexicon analyzer get next token. So, to provide the next token to it and as we understand as we have seen in the lexicon analysis tool. So, lexicon analysis tool, so it actually scans the source file. So, if this is the source file, so it has got the pointer y y in and that pointer from that pointer it will try to see what is the maximally matched token for this uh, for the next inputs part. So, accordingly it will uh, it will find out the token and return it to the parser. So, parser getting this token will try to see like what may be the corresponding action. So, it may try to follow or if a certain grammar rule for uh, deriving the uh, statement or, uh, or deriving the line, line of text like that or it may be that it finds that the token that it has got is not meaningful in this con in this uh, uh, at this point of time. So, that in that case, so that is an error. So, that is a grammatical error. So, typical examples may be that suppose it has seen uh, an identifier, okay. suppose it has seen an identifier uh, as a token. So, id is the token returned by lexicon analyzer. Now, uh, uh, if, I, if I consider uh, a language that consists of only arithmetic expressions, okay. then after id, so uh, it is expected that I will get an operator here. Okay. So, it is expected that I will get an operator, but instead if the lexicon, so after getting the token id from the lexicon analyzer, the parser asks for the next token and the next token if it happens to be again id, that means then the parser will understand that there is some grammatical problem or grammatical mistake in the input. So, it can flag that particular error that at this point there is a, there is a problem, there is an error because it was expecting an operator and it is getting an identifier. However, the lexicon analyzer tool, so it could not understand this particular problem. So, lexicon analyzer tool, so it just scanned the input and whatever uh, is the maximally matched token at that point of time, so it has returned to the parser. So, this lexicon analyzer and parser, they are working hand in hand. So, they are the whenever parser is requiring token, so it is asking the uh, lexicon analyzer tool and uh, uh, then it is proceeding. The, it is trying to see like which grammar rule may be applied for um, deriving the input and then uh, if it if it is successful then the process will go on and if it is uh, if, it, if it can do it completely for the entire program then it will generate a parse tree. So, outcome of this parser is basically two things one is uh, one is an yes no answer one is an yes no answer that is whether the source program that is given is following the grammar or not. So, if the source program is following the grammar then the parser will answer yes, if it is not following the answer grammar so it will answer no. So, if it answers yes in that case so we can make it to generate another output which is known as parse tree. So, this will show how the grammar rules have, uh, can be applied to have the, the input source uh, program derived from the start symbol of the grammar. And then the later stages of the compiler, so they can uh, take help of this parse tree and can generate appropriate uh, output. Okay, so it may be some code, it may be some uh, something else, whatever it is. So some action, so whatever it is, so it can uh, do that part. And also, if the answer is no, in that case, the parser can uh, tell us at which point it found the problem. As I was telling, so it was expecting an operator while it got id. So, it can flash that message that okay, I was expecting an uh, operator. So, uh, there is a mismatch. So, it can uh, flash, so it, can, uh, it can identify that situation. So, it is uh, basically the job of the compiler designer to see that uh, to ensure that those uh, erroneous conditions are uh, checked and those erroneous conditions are uh, uh, appropriately uh, uh, informed to the user. Okay, so then the user will correct the source program and again give it for compilation. So, it will go like this. On the other hand, this parser uh, also uh, takes help of this symbol table. So, as I say, as we said that whenever this lexicon analyzer finds a, a new identifier, so it, it installs this identifier into the symbol table and returns the 
index of the identifier to the parts are as an attribute in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the attribute yyl val or something like that so uh, this parser can again use this symbol table to get further attributes for the uh, symbol so from uh, y from the lexicon analyzer so it has only got the index of the symbol table where that particular identifier is defined from the uh, from the symbol table it has got more information like type of the identifier or that uh, that's the type of operators that can be applied on it and all so that way the parser can check all those things so we have got uh, this uh, particular role of the parser so it it is it is central to the compiler the uh, overall operation of the compiler so it is uh, so it is the main part of the compiler that we have so we'll see how this parser can be designed to start with we define a grammar okay a grammar is a four tuple g consisting of uh, four say, uh, four parts vn vt p and s so the for a language l so if, if a grammar is g then the language for it is known as is uh, denoted by lg so lg it denotes the language corresponding to the grammar g and that language has got uh, and this grammar g definition so it has got uh, four uh, parts in it vn vt p and s where vn is a set of non terminal symbols used to write the grammar so uh, so uh, vn uh, uh, is that uh, so for writing the grammar so we need some special symbols so they will construct the non terminal symbols whereas vt is the set of terminal symbols which is a set of words in the language so since they this uh, the symbols that uh, the, the the symbols that are appearing in vt so they are appearing in the final language so they are called terminal symbols whereas the symbols which are belonging to non terminal set vn so they are not appearing in the final program or the final input so uh, or the final language so that's why they are called non terminal so uh, so we should be the final derivation that we have so there should not be any non terminal left so everything has to be replaced by terminal and then these terminals can be uh, terminals can be combined in some fashion to uh, using this uh, grammar rules to get the uh, overall part tree then uh, apart from this vn and vt the set of uh, non terminal and terminal symbols we have got a set of production rules for the grammar so production rules actually tells like how can we proceed with in the non terminals how can how can we replace non terminals by set of terminals or non terminals etc so we'll see some example and s is a special symbol in uh, in the uh, set vn set of non terminal symbols and it is called the start symbol of the grammar okay now so we'll take an example so this is a grammar this is a grammar so in this grammar so you see that some symbols are termi non terminal symbols like symbols like e then t f okay so they are terminal symbol non terminal symbols whereas symbols like plus star open parenthesis close parenthesis id so these are called these are the terminal symbols because so this particular grammar is for arithmetic expressions that has got uh, multiplication addition uh, as the operator and the parenthesis is also there so you can have an expression like say 2 plus 3 into 5 so this is uh, this is supposed to be a valid uh, uh, string of this language so how can i have this uh, uh, grammar how can i have this string so so starting with say e so i can um, use the first rule e e producing so this this uh, part so uh, we read it as e producing e plus t or t so this is actually combination of two rules e producing e plus t and another rule e producing t so there are two rules so for the sake of brevity so we just uh, write them together and write it as e producing e plus t or t so by combining these two so we will write it as e producing e plus t or t 
but for uh, but you should keep in mind that the this actually mean that there are two rules one rule is e producing e plus t another rule is e producing t since their left hand sides are common for the rules so we are writing them together so let us uh, go back to the point like say uh, for say e i can use this rule e producing e um, uh, i can uh, i can I can use uh, the I can have a de derivation like this e producing t and then uh, t producing t star f and then this uh, uh, t producing f producing e and this uh, e produce is f producing within bracket e and then this e again giving the remaining part. So, this is actually giving e plus t okay. Okay, let me draw it afresh because it is not. So, the expression that I have is 2 plus 3 star 5. Okay. So, I start if I start with e then e producing T. First, of, first of all, I have to derive this part. So, this multiplication of two expressions. So, the, if this is expression 1, this is expression 2. So, I have to do it a multiplication of two expressions. So, that is what we are trying to do. So, T producing uh, E producing T and this T producing T star F. Okay. Then, this um, uh, from this F, I will have ID which is 5. Now, for the left t, from this left t, I have to derive this part, this uh, 2 plus uh, within bracket 2 plus 3. So, from this t, we write f and from f, we write open bracket e, closing bracket and then from this e, we have got e plus t and from this e, we get t to f to i d which is uh, 2 in our case and then this t gives f gives i d which is 3 in our case. So, this is called the parse tree. Right? So, this will be more clear so, as we proceed uh, through the remaining part uh, of this course. So, this will be more or less this will be uh, this is this is what we are exactly going to do in our uh, future lectures. So, now, you see that uh, this particular grammar is uh, used for deriving, uh, uh, deriving expressions that involves addition and multiplication. Now, this is another grammar. Okay. So, apparently it seems that they are very different from uh, each other, but this is also same as this one. So, we can we, we can we will see later that these two grammars are equivalent. So, it is not mandatory that for a particular language there can be only a single grammar. So, different people can come up with different grammars and if, if you use this particular grammar then uh, the way we should uh, do the derivation is like this that uh, so we have got 2 plus 3 star 5. So, uh, this you have to start with t e and then e we have got only one rule t e dash and from this t i have to derive this within bracket 2 uh, 2 plus 3 so for doing that so we replace this uh, t by f t dash and then this uh, t dash can give rise to epsilon okay using this rule t dash giving epsilon and from this f we do it like within bracket e and from this e I have to get that 2 plus 3. So, from this t e I is also from this uh, I again do t and e dash and from this t uh, okay, from, from this t I will be going to f t dash and this this t dash will give epsilon this f will give i d which is 2. Now, from this e dash I will do 
plus t e dash to plus t e dash and the now this uh, e dash part can be made to epsilon and then this t will be giving me f t dash and then this t dash will give me epsilon then this f can give i d and which is equal to 3 in our case. Okay. Now, for this e dash part from this e dash I have to derive this star uh, uh, that star 5. Okay. So, for that so I have to so for this uh, oh sorry not from here actually in the from this t dash I have to do that that star f t dash uh, that star will come from here. So, this is uh, star f t dash and this this t dash will give me epsilon and this f will give me i d which is 5 and this e dash will give me epsilon. So, this way I can have another parse tree for the uh, same expression, but using a different language. So, both the parse trees are correct only because the grammar is different. So, there the trees are appearing to be uh, different and uh, um, uh, it appears to be uh, very difficult to draw the parse tree. So, I was just trying to uh, do it uh, uh, intuitively starting with the um, starting with the grammar rules and trying to derive the final string. So, it is very much possible that uh, we get misled and we uh, go to some other derivation which does not lead to the uh, final string. So, this uh, uh, our discussion on this parser generator will uh, will actually avoid all these things. So, it will it will guide us so that we can select the proper production rules at different points okay, and we can uh, we can operate we, we can uh, derive the uh, final uh, uh, parse tree which which will be correct. Okay. So, next we will be looking into Uh, some error handling mechanisms, but before that, uh, so there can be different types of grammars that I would uh, like to introduce. One is uh, uh, the one type of uh, depending upon their capacity, so there are different types. So, type 0, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Out of them, type 0 is the most flexible. So, this is the most flexible or most powerful, most flexible and powerful and type 3 is the least flexible, least flexible and it is uh, um, naturally power, the power is also less. So, power in the sense that uh, the uh, type of languages for which it can construct a grammar. Okay. So, the, if you try to construct type 3 grammar, then you will find that for the many languages you cannot do that. Okay. And type 1 and type 2, they are uh, some intermediary types. Okay. So, uh, so, this type 3 uh, languages, so they are also known as regular language. And the corresponding grammars are known as regular grammar and incidentally the, the regular expressions that we have seen in our lexicon analysis discussion. So, they fall into this particular category, they fall into this class of regular grammar. Then this type 2, so this is known as context free grammar, context free grammar. So, most of the programming language constructs they will belong to this context free category. Okay. So, most of the constructs that you have in normal programming languages that we are familiar with, so they belong to the context free grammar. So, most of the time our discussion will be centered around context free grammars only. Then type 1 it is known as context sensitive grammar. So, they are known as context sensitive grammar because uh, we will take some examples uh, later. So, where it will show that it, it can be more powerful than context uh, free grammar and type 0 grammar. So, they are known as free grammar. Okay. 
So, accordingly, so if you try to de design uh, a recognizer, then designing recognizer for type 3 is the simplest job that we have already done in terms of uh, finite automata NFA and DFA. Type 2 is more complex where you will need a stack apart from uh, the finite automata. So, that they are it is known as push down automata. So, that will be able to do that. Then uh, the constructing the other acceptors for type 1 and type 0 they will be more and more difficult. Okay. So, most of the time will be restricted to context 3 uh, uh, type uh, type 2 grammars only that is context free grammars because programming language constructs they belong to this particular category.